Hello everyone. The RU800 is a drop-in replacement for the Tektronix U800 hybrid integrated circuit found on the Tektronix 2400 series oscilloscopes. The blue PCB you see in these pictures is the version that's being made available for sale. The video that follows will demonstrate the performance of the RU800 uh, taken with an earlier prototype, the green PCB. Have fun watching. Thank you. Hello everyone, greetings from Bangalore, India. My name is Ram and this video is about a little project I did to build a drop-in replacement for the famous, or should I say infamous, Tektronix U800 chip that goes into the 2400 series oscilloscopes. Uh, what I have here is uh, a 2465A, that's a 350 megahertz oscilloscope, and <clears throat> that came with the entire horizontal output system on a chip called the U800, which experienced many field failures, as you are probably already aware. Uh, today, these chips are, of course, impossible to find. They are unobtainium. And the last time I looked up uh, eBay, the, the going price was about $150 each. So I decided to sit down and see if I could build a drop-in replacement for this. Of course, I'm not the first one to have tried to build a replacement. But what I finally did come up with was a fairly compact unit that looks a bit like this. The size of this... Uh, it's a four-layer board. The size of this permits me to drop it in. It's got components on both sides. It just drops in to replace your original chip. You don't need to make any modifications to the board. You don't need to uh, uh, you know, make additional space around this board because it's small enough to fit in the available space. Uh, as we proceed, I will show you how this chip functions uh, pretty much in all the modes that you'd like to care about, which is uh, X1, X10, the XY mode, and so on. Here we go. So like we said, this is meant to be a drop-in replacement. And as you can see, I have socketed the original position of the U800 to make it easy to, to test this board. Socketing does have disadvantages. It does introduce certain distortions, which are inevitable. Uh, but then, uh, like we'll see, those distortions are fairly mild in nature and don't really interfere with the functionality. Here we go. I pretty much just drop in the board and it sits right where it's supposed to. Okay, so to be able to vet the performance of this drop-in board and to compare it with the original U800, I created a little uh, checklist, a performance checklist. I call my drop-in board the RU800, quite unabashedly, uh, which stands for RAM's U800. First things first, the readout should be crisp and clear. Otherwise, you don't even know what you're doing, right? Secondly, in the X1 mode, the horizontal position knob should, of course, work as intended. And there is a gain adjust trimmer for the X1 mode on the main board, which should uh, allow you to trim the gain in the X1 mode. In the X10 mode, the horizontal position knob should allow you to pan back and forth 10 screenfuls and the the extend gain adjust trimmer on the main board should allow you to further refine the gain in the extend mag mode the b sweep should should work as intended in the 500 picoseconds per division mode which is the fastest sweep of the oscilloscope we should see sufficient linearity linearity starts to get more critical at that speed and we should be able to see rising and falling edges as clearly as you would see them with the original U800. The XY mode, which is not really a crucial function, should nevertheless work as expected. And last but not the least, the utility functions such as the beam find, the horizontal center trimmer or the main board, etc. should work the way they do with the original U800 chip. How well does the RU800 do on this checklist? Let's take a look. To fast forward to specific sections of this video, use the timestamps mentioned in the video description. 
Okay, so we set the ball rolling with a 10 megahertz sine wave from my 8640B signal generator and see what's coming up on the screen. And as you can see, readouts are fairly clear and stable. The sine wave is fairly accurately rendered, it matches the markers. This is on the 100 nanoseconds range. There is an X1 trimmer, gain trimmer on the main board here. And as you should expect, changing this setting does allow you to calibrate the gain in the X1 setting. From the X1 mode, we now move over to the X10 mode, which is this little button here, X10 mag. And pressing it will take you to a display with 10 nanoseconds per division as a time base. The waveform is expanded out by a factor of 10. To be able to see things in more detail, we should probably crank up the frequency a little bit. And we do that on 8640. Let's take the frequency right up to 10 megahertz. 100 megahertz rather. That should be accurate enough for our purpose. And you can now see that the waveform has once again aligned itself to, to the markers. <clears throat> if you do need to do some gain trimming at this stage, you do have the X10 gain adjustment trimmer on the main board. And as you can see, turning that will allow you to calibrate the X10 gain as well. In this setting, you can actually roll the waveform quite extensively either ways. It essentially covers 10 screenfuls of this waveform because the waveform is expanded out by a factor of 10. So that's the way you would expect it to work and it does work that way. So at this point, we've covered the first three points. Looks like they're working fine. Uh, things now get a little more interesting as we move on to the B-sweep. Let's now look at how the B-sweep works with a 10 megahertz signal on the 100 nanoseconds per division range. To enable the B-sweep, we pull out this knob. That gives you the new display here. And it shows you essentially the delay before the B-sweep starts. The highlighted portion of the trace shows you the, 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 the section of the A trace that the B sweep is actually covering. You can make out the highlighted portion is a little distorted. That's a consequence of using uh, an IC socket for the chip. And that's something you would see even if you used the original U800 uh, on a socketed board. I can change the B sweep. I can push back the knob to expose just the B sweep there it is. Let's now take a look at the performance of the RU800 on the highest range, the highest speed range, which is 500 picoseconds per division. To do that with a sine wave, we can just crank up the generator to 400 megahertz. Yep, that's a little bit more than the stated bandwidth of the oscilloscope, which is 350 megahertz. But it does work fairly well, as you can see. With a little bit of centering, you can see that the waveform does line up pretty accurately with the markers. The readouts continue to be reasonably sharp. There's a little bit of jitter, but nothing that hampers readability. Moving the trace from side to side doesn't distort the waveform, which is an indication of decent linearity of the ramp at 500 picoseconds per division. To further verify the performance of the RU800 on the 500 picosecond range, I used a commercially available 50 picosecond rise time square wave generator. And that's the rising edge uh, as rendered with the original U800. Uh, what you see here, of course, is not a 50 picosecond rise time. It's pretty much the rise time of the oscilloscope itself, about one nanosecond. So we'd now like to see how well the RU800's uh, rise time rendition at the five, in the 500 picosecond range matches up 
with the rendering of this rising edge on with the original U800. Let's take a look. Now let's see how that 50 picosecond rise time pulse looks with the RU800. Spot the difference? Well, I think the likeness is, is not bad. It more or less retained the characteristics of the original pulse. Uh, and if you move the pulse from left to right, you can see that it retains the shape. It doesn't get distorted, which pretty much goes to show again that even at 500 picoseconds per division, the sweep ramp is quite linear for our purposes. The RU800 is also able to do XY measurements. Uh, to do the XY demonstration, I have a little multimeter acting as a signal source. It just feeds out a simple square wave, which I feed to channel 1 and channel 2. To enter XY mode, you need to turn the sec per division knob counterclockwise till you hit XY mode. There you are. At that point, you can see that things are accurate. It's a straight line because the same signal is being fed to the X as well as the Y channels. Last but not the least, the main board has something called the horizontal center trimmer, which is meant to center the display. And that works pretty much as expected. There you go. And ah, before I forget, let's make sure the beam find works. Here we go. It compresses the display horizontally as well as vertically by half. So that's our checklist again, and it does look like the RU800 uh, does do a reasonable job of pretty much all of the points in this checklist. So that was a video about the uh, replacement, drop-in replacement for the Tech U800. Thanks for watching. I do have plans of introducing this as product, maybe, uh, to be hosted on a popular uh, auction site or to other uh, channels from where you can buy it. Uh, if you think you're interested, you'd be interested in buying such a thing from me, let me know, drop me a line. You'll see my email ID below. Uh, thanks once again for watching and good luck with the restoration project.